Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the story Prometheus and we are going to uh, do a different set of notes today. Today we're going to look at outlining. Okay, we've talked about outlining essays this year, but we haven't necessarily talked about outlining as a way of taking notes. Outlining for taking notes can be very powerful. It's very easy to identify what the most important points are as well as what some of the supporting details are. And um, it takes a lot of thinking to do up front, which I think ultimately pays off in the end because you remember more of what you've read because you're thinking about it at a deeper level. Now, um, we, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about outlining in uh, essays. And this is similar, though uh, we're not gonna necessarily outline introductions or conclusions or things like that. But when I'm reading something to outline, I am going to identify main topics, okay? Then I'm going to give a subtopic and I might give another thoughtful or supporting fact underneath that, as well as identifying another subtopic of that main topic and then facts underneath that as well. The further I go out right, the more detailed my thoughts get. We go for main, to um, main idea, to maybe a main sub idea, to more detail and facts. And then once I've explored all of the facts with this main topic, I might move on to a different topic. You can use um, Roman numerals to do this. You can use letters, you can use numbers, you can use a combination of all three, which is likely what I will do today. Um, and so I'm gonna set this off to the side and what I have here are is just, plain lined paper and I'm going to start out by um, identifying the name of my story which is Prometheus. I'm going to put my name at the top just so I can find it in case it gets left behind somewhere or lost and um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with my first main point and um, when I start the story, we're talking about two Titan brothers, Prometheus and Epimetheus, okay? And so my first main points are gonna have to do with the very beginning of the story. And it kind of, at the very beginning of the story, identifies what these characters are able to do. And so I might start with what I think to be the main idea is that there's these two brothers that can do wonderful things with their hands. So my first main topic might be something like, uh, there were two Titan brothers. Then I might do like a um, colon like that. And then I'll put Prometheus and Epimetheus. And then another subtopic I can put underneath here is I might say, um, like letter A, there uh, they were powerful can um, and that they can make things with their hands, make life essentially. with their hands. Um, I'm just rereading my text here, which is a good thing to have your text right here so you can go back and see what detail you need to add. Even though I've read this several times, I still look back at my original to get some inspiration of what uh, I need to put next. Uh, he, let's see, Prometheus takes the earth in his hands and he realizes that there are some heavenly seeds in them and uh, these help to give life. So when he uh, mixes the seed and earth, he can mold it to create 
uh, new life. And he does this to create a figure of clay. Um, he does this to create humans. And so I might say something like uh, Prometheus discovers seeds of life mixes with um, clay and dirt makes man and I'm going to underline that because that's pretty important to me. All right. And then we have his brother, Epithemius, Ep Epimetheus, excuse me, Epimetheus. Um, and he creates the other creatures. That's what this second paragraph is about. So I might start with a, another main point because I'm going to start talking about Epimetheus, excuse me makes other creatures on earth okay um he gives creatures i might say underneath as a sub detail gives creatures gifts like it says uh strength and speed so i might say strength speed uh gives tortoise his shell he kind of thought about what would they need and then responds gives eagle his talons And let's see. Oh, says that uh, gives sheep their woolly uh, coat. And I'm gonna stop there. He talks about other animals, but I think that's enough. We get the picture that he does this. Um, Uh, Epith it goes to Epi Epimetheus was interested in a man that his brother had made, but he was also concerned that man might be a danger of the wild beast um, that were so numerous in every corner of the earth now. So he suggests that his brother Prometheus take a wooden torch to the heavens and light it at the chariot of the sun. And this way he brought down fire to the earth. So um, I might say something like... Uh, Concern for man, oops, sorry, concerned for man, suggest, and I'm not going to use complete sentences here because it's just my notes, suggest that Prometheus bring fire down to man. All right, so that's this third. paragraph we kind of summarized and he does and I could even do another sub bullet I could say uh, like do a number one here say uh, Prometheus gets fire from the Sun chariot okay let's look at the next paragraph up here oh no am I 
I'm not sure if you guys caught all that. Okay, I'm gonna pause this right here. I didn't realize I hit my recording. I'm gonna check and see what I got done. All right, I will try not to hit the cord here. That was kind of silly. All right, so I'm at the top here. Um, we talked about how he got fire from the chariot. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about how fire was a useful gift. I might put that underneath here because that's another sub fact. Fire, very useful for man. All right, um, he begin, first man begins to build, um, you know, huts and homes and he can defend himself against wild beast and uh, creates the ax and cuts down trees and begins to plow fields and using Epiphemius's oxen and to uh, build grain. So I might put this as a third main point I might say something like man begins to cultivate land and begins to um, build homes and changes land. Okay, um, it seems like things are going really well for a while, but uh, it says that man starts to uh, kind of, as men do, once they start to start to put claim to things, they start to want to possess more than their neighbor and therefore start to divide things and this leads to war. So, I might as a subpoint say, now that man builds wealth, now that man builds wealth, he begins to war with his neighbors. Um, and even the gods get on in this, so I might do a subpoint. Gods join in wars. And um, it talks about how there was a golden age at first. And um, at first, we go from, I might say, point B, go from golden age, which was, I might just say, equals great, to silver age. which equals okay and then uh, then we have the bronze age it's getting harder and then iron age is cold winters hot summers Okay, and I'm going to start a new page here. I might say something like with, I'll start over here with C. Zeus, he's starting to get mad with the people, mad at mankind because they're acting like babies and being greedy and fighting. So what does he do first? He imprisons. I put in prisoners, imprisons the north wind. Then um, it causes, I might do another little here, it causes darkness. Crops die. Then Zeus 
calls Poseidon to flood the earth. Sound familiar? <laughs> And I'm on my back side of my story here now. Uh, as a result, um, lots of animals, I'd say, I might put this here, lots of animals, plants die. And then the next part is that people start to pray that they are forgiven, right? And um, there is the last mountain peak and uh, Prometheus helps man and woman stay there. Uh, and it says, remembering the heavenly seed that was part of their birthright, they looked up towards the sky and begged Zeus to take pity on them. Zeus, flattered by their voices of the people, ordered the north wind to drive away the clouds. And Poseidon sounded his horn to order the waters to retreat. So we might say, third point here, people pray to Zeus and he, and he, he forgives them. And he stops destruction. All right, um, let's see. They are now required to rebuild everything. Uh, Earth was barren. But we know that uh, it says uh, one way to leave the earth, the barren place, they had two ways to go about it, right? They could leave the earth barren, which it was now was, and try to wreak vengeance on Zeus, people could, for the destruction he'd brought upon earth. Prometheus, the Titan, still lived, and he was possessed of the secret by means of which he could take Zeus's throne away from him. He would probably never have used the secret, but the fact that he had came to the ears of the mighty Zeus and caused much uh, consternation among the gods. Zeus ordered Hephaestus, the god of blacksmithery, to forge some great lengths of heavy chain. With these, he chained Prometheus to a rock and sent a vulture to eat his flesh, which grew again continually so that Prometheus suffered terrible pain as the vulture returned each day. Um, it says his torture would come to an end the moment he told a secret, Zeus assured Prometheus, but the giant would not speak because of the harm his words might cause men and women on earth. He suffered there without any rest, and the earth began to take pity on his former guise of fertility and prosperity as man tried to bring back the golden age through his own efforts. Uh, basically, Prometheus, he won't spill his secrets of how to overthrow Zeus, and this makes Zeus mad, and so he uh, chains him, and then this vulture eats him every day, but doesn't kill him, so that's pretty gruesome. But let's go ahead, we're on uh, bullet point number four. And basically, uh, let's see, what I'm going to say is Prometheus won't tell Zeus how to avoid his downfall, ultimately protecting man. What does he do in return? He um, chains him. So I might go to A, chains Prometheus. Then the, uh, let's see, vulture eats his flesh every day see Prometheus suffers but does not spill his secrets all right this inspires people because um, it means that if he can suffer then Pete man can suffer to rebuild earth so I would say um, I might put this as a sub point and I think I'm at one man suffers to bring back fertility 
suffers and works hard to bring fertility back to earth. And I might say inspired by Prometheus. And I believe that is pretty much um, the story. There is a little bit more because it says that Prometheus called heavenly seed, um, the heavenly seed that he put on us, our soul. So I would say that's a pretty important fact. So I might add one more bullet point here and say that heavenly seed within us considered the human soul all right hopefully that was helpful for you that is a lot of notes but i think having summarized everything i'm not going to remember i mean i'm sorry i'm not going to forget what happened in our story remember we have a basic outlining method here of the main topics, subtopics, and supporting facts. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a copy of this as well, but basically this is just a little bit more in depth of what um, kinds of things you might want to include in your uh, notes, okay? Uh, you can, and this just kind of talks about like what kind of uh, main ideas you go through and then moving to the right is the more detailed ideas. And it also tells you that you don't have to use letters, numbers, or Roman numerals. The hierarchy is enough. Just even doing this like format, we know that main ideas start here and it goes to more detailed the further right we go. Um, it talks about some of the advantages we have for outlining. Um, we know it's well organized. It records relationships and content. It reduces editing and is easy review by adding main points into questions or turning the main points into questions. Um, and some disadvantages is you need to pay close attention during class. So if I was outlining as I was listening to a lecture, I'd have to be really on it because you might miss something. Um, it does not always show sequential relationships, meaning one after the next. And um, it won't work well for really quick paced lectures. I think outlining works best with readings, actually. Not that you can't do it during live, uh, live uh, discussions, but it might be kind of a challenge. But I think for outlining readings is very powerful. And the nice thing is if I were to share this with somebody else, it'd be very easy for them to follow my train of thought because they already kind of recognize how outlines work. And actually, when I went to college, I did share outlines with my students. We'd have study groups, or not my students, my peers. And I would say, hey, you read chapter five and outline it, and I'll read chapter six and outline it, and then we can put our notes together. And in doing that, we kind of cut down our work. So it can be really powerful. You wanna get a good study group though. You don't wanna, you wanna go with the good workers. Anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. All right, thank you, and bye-bye.